Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, hi, welcome. My name is Zach. I'm a makeup artist and medical esthetician based in Toronto, Canada. And here on YouTube, I like to make beauty as simple and easy as I can. Today, I wanted to create a look that was easy, wearable for the everyday person like you and me, but I wanted to use all Sephora products because currently the Sephora sale is going on for fall 2021. I wanted to create something more in line with something that I would watch as a viewer, and that is a simple makeup tutorial. I wanted to feature some of the top rated and best selling products at Sephora. Now, that brings me up on a mini rant when I was looking at Sephora, I went to, you know, like, say, for instance, foundation, sort it by best selling. And then you'll get like a product that is like brand new, launched last week. And it has like, I think one product had like 100 views and five stars. And I'm like, how is this best selling? But then you sort by top rated and you'll get like a five star product that has two reviews. So what I did is I went through every item in the categories we're working with today, and then I looked for something with the most reviews. So say for instance, one eyeshadow palette I think had like 9,000 reviews. I'm gonna choose to review that. So in my mind, that would be a bigger seller than something with 10 reviews. So if that makes sense, that is what we are doing today. So, so I'm gonna be starting with the eyes because Fallout can't handle it don't like how it makes things look patchy. So I'm gonna start with the eyes and I'm gonna be using the Too Faced Shadow Insurance Primer. The Too Faced Shadow Insurance would be considered the second best selling primer for eyes at Sephora with the number one primer being the Urban Decay Eyeshadow Primer Potion Original. It currently has four and a half stars based on 7.5 thousand reviews and it retails for $32 at 10 mil a product. So the one I'm gonna be using today is the Too Faced Shadow Insurance Eyeshadow Primer. It has four and a half stars based on 6.5 thousand reviews and it retails for $32. I've used this primer quite a few times on my channel. It is a nice eyeshadow primer. It gives you a nice base. It has a slight teachiness to it, so it does give you a little bit of tone correction as far as your eyelids, and it does a decent job at gripping on to shadows. It's not my holy grail eyeshadow primer, but it's nice. I, I enjoy using it. So I let the eyeshadow primer dry for a moment. I'm gonna go ahead and prep my lips. And to prep my lips, I'm gonna be using the Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask. I have the original berry flavor. The Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask currently has 4.25 stars based on 13.9 thousand reviews and it tells for $26 and you get 20 grams of product. So. You get a lot of product compared to a lot of the other lip balms. With the Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask, I've had this in my collection for a while. I really, really enjoy it. I also purchased their Lip Glowy Balm, which is a little bit thinner. I prefer the consistency of this. I just don't like the container. I wish we had this formula in a squeeze tube. Now, that might be a little too thick to kind of squeeze out, but I personally enjoy it. And I'm gonna be using the Urban Decay Naked 3 eyeshadow palette. Currently on Sephora, this is the second best-selling eyeshadow palette, with the number one palette being the Anastasia Beverly Hills Modern Renaissance Palette. So it currently is receiving 4.75 stars, and it has 9.1 thousand reviews, and it retails for $60, and you get 7.84 grams of product. This is an eyeshadow palette I bought shortly after it launched. I absolutely love it. I loved the shadows. I loved everything about it, but something with the reddy pinky tones in that palette, they really, really irritated my eyes anytime I tried to use them. So I did pass along to a friend, but if you're someone, you're someone whose eyes aren't bothered by certain colors, you might really enjoy it. So the palette I'm working with today is second most reviewed eyeshadow palette on Sephora's website. And it currently has four stars based on 6.6 thousand reviews and it retails for $68 and you get 16.92 grams of product. So if you're unfamiliar with the Urban Decay Naked 3, it has a really nice kind of rosy neutral color story to it and it comes with a really nice double ended brush. I really like the brushes that come in the Urban Decay and Anastasia palettes. I find them really nice, they clean up well and 
I like them. Some people don't like them. I like them because they're easy to use. So to get started, I'm gonna use the thinner flat end of the brush and I'm gonna go into the lightest shade of the palette called Strange. This is gonna be my all over eye kind of base. So I'm gonna apply this from lash line up to the brow. So now I'm gonna use the fluffier side of the brush and I am gonna go in to the fourth shade in the palette called Limit. And I'm gonna pick that up right on the point of the brush. And I'm gonna use this shade to start kind of mapping out my eye shape. And then I'm just gonna use a light hand to sketch out the shape that I want for my eyes. I apply I want to keep everything nice and soft so I'm gonna be using my BK Beauty times Angie hot and flashy this is the 503 just using this clean to make sure everything is nice and soft so continuing with that more fluffy side of the brush I'm gonna go into a slightly darker shade so this is the seventh shade in the palette and it is called Nooner right here on this outer edge where I create my little stencil for my kind of uptick I am going to stamp this shade there and then take it about halfway into my socket line. So I'm going to continue with the fluffier end of the brush and I'm going to go into the fifth shade of the palette called Buzz and I'm going to pat this from lash line up to meet that darker color we applied in our socket. And I want a little bit more kind of color payoff with the shade so I'm going to apply two layers. So I'm now gonna go back into the thinner end of the brush and I'm gonna go into the sixth shade in the palette called Trick and I'm gonna take it right on the point of the brush and I'm gonna use this shade to add a little bit of a contrasting color to the inner corner of my eye. It Cosmetics Brow Power Eyebrow Brush and I'm just gonna use a little fluffy end of this. And I'm gonna go into the ninth shade of the palette called Factory. And I'm gonna use this color to line my upper lash line. Now I'm gonna go back in with that BK Beauty brush and I am just going to start at the inner corner, little circles right on the perimeter of the shadow to soften everything out. Now I wanna brighten up my eyes a little bit more so I'm gonna line my upper waterline and I'm gonna be using the Sephora Retractable Eye Pencil in 15 Slate. So on Sephora's website, these are the third most reviewed eyeliner pencils. The second ones are the Marc Jacobs, which I do have, but since they're discontinued, I didn't want to feature them. And the most reviewed eyeliner pencil on Sephora's website is the Urban Decay 24-7 Glide On Waterproof Eye Pencil. They currently have 4.25 stars based on 16.3 thousand reviews. They retail for $30 and you get 1.2 grams of product. The Sephora pencil I'm gonna be using is the Sephora Collection Retractable Waterproof Eyeliner. It has four stars based on 6.5 thousand reviews and it retails for $17 and you get 0.31 grams of product. So once you have your upper waterline done, if that's something you like to do, I'm gonna then go back in, use that it Cosmetics brush again, shade factory that we use to line, and I am gonna go over and reline the eye. And I just like to say that because sometimes when you line the upper waterline, it can be a really kind of tickly or itchy sensation. So sometimes a little bit of that pencil eyeliner gets into the upper lash line. So I like to use a little bit more of our liner just to go through and smooth everything out with a small cotton bud and I'm just gonna remove any of that liner that got onto my lower water line. So I'm gonna clean up under my eyes with a little bit of Bioderma on the opposite end of that cotton bud and that's just to make sure that anything that might have fallen down will not muddy up our foundation or concealer. And also you can even go right here on this outer corner, twist up towards the tail of your brow, bring up the shape. And you can see even though it might not look like we had anything under the eyes, we are getting some fallout cleanup. We're gonna give the Bioderma a moment to dry and kind of set down, and then we'll move on with foundation and concealer. I'm gonna be using a primer that is not the top rated, but it's got a lot of reviews. I'm gonna be using the Milk Hydro Grip Primer. However, their most reviewed primer for face at Sephora is the Benefit 
Core Professional Pore Minimizing Primer. It has four stars based on 7.6 thousand reviews. It retails for $43 and you get 21 grams of product. The Milk Hydro Grip Primer is currently receiving four stars based on 4.2 thousand reviews and it retails for $44 for 45 ml of product. For foundation, I'm gonna be using the Estee Lauder Double Wear Stay in Place Foundation. This is another one that's well reviewed, but it is not the number one most reviewed foundation. The most reviewed foundation on Sephora's website is the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Soft Matte Longwear Foundation. It's currently receiving four stars based on 16.4 thousand reviews, and it retails for $47, and you get 32 mil of product. And the Estee Lauder Double Wear Foundation is currently receiving 4.25 stars based on 6.6 thousand reviews, and it retails for $54 for 30 mil of product. So Double Wear is a foundation, a little bit goes a long way, and it dries down quite quickly. So I like to take a tiny amount and use my BK Beauty 101 to pat and smooth out. Because this is a foundation that can be worn very, very full coverage, or you can apply a little bit and spread it out to get more of a lightweight effect. I'm gonna go a little bit thinner with it because the shade I have is one in two accrue and it's a little too dark for me. I've used this foundation over the years. I've had several different colors and I can't quite find a color that works well for me. I need to look at the shades again and because I've noticed they've added some lighter shades that might work for me. Before I tried, I think it was 1C1 Cool Bone and it was an okay shade. It just pulled too pink and that kind of looked orange. Okay, so I have one thin layer all over my face. I've maybe used a half a pump all over my face. So now I'm going to go back in tiny, tiny little bit more. I'm going to look through and add coverage where I want. Here is one thin layer all over and then a second layer added to areas of concern where I wanted a little bit more coverage. Do, by doing my application like that, it allows me to take this medium to full coverage foundation and make it more of a light to light medium foundation. So that way, even though the color isn't perfect for me, I can make it a little bit more wearable. It's still darker than my face, but like I mentioned in my foundation matching video, if you haven't seen that, I will have that link linked and in the description box down below. But with a more medium to full coverage foundation, the color becomes even trickier because where the pigment is a lot more dense, you need to have more of a spot on color because you're not gonna get that kind of flexibility with something more of a light coverage. I want to add a little bit of a cream highlighter because I like to add a cream or liquid highlighter over on the skin before I do concealing because it just makes the complexion look more alive and realistic. And the most reviewed liquid or cream concealer at Sephora is the NARS Multiple and it's currently receiving four stars based on 2.8 thousand reviews. It retails for $50 and you get 14 grams of product. I have a little mini one in the shade of Copacabana. I just use my finger because then it's gonna kind of warm up and melt into the skin and then I can really feel my cheekbones and where I want to apply it because normally a highlighter is best when it's kind of kept to the cheekbone. So I was just mentioning this morning in a comment to a subscriber that if you're unsure of where to place your products at, sometimes just close your eyes and feel the structure of your face there. You'll feel the fatty pad of the cheek. You'll feel the heart of the cheekbone. You'll feel the kind of recession or the lower points of the face where it's a little bit more hollow where you would apply your contour. So that is a great trick. So just use your hands to explore your face and the natural structure of your face. And that will help you so much when applying your makeup products and allow you to really customize your application. Applied sparingly, you can get such a beautiful effect. Since this Estee Lauder foundation is more of a kind of matte finish, I'm gonna take a little bit of the highlight right on the bridge of my nose point of my chin and I like to take a little bit just over the arch of my brow and highlighting over the arch of the brow will help give you a little bit of a brow lift. Next I'm going to do my concealer 
And I'm gonna be using an oldie but a goodie. This is the Makeup Forever Full Cover Concealer. And this is, once again, this is not the most reviewed concealer at Sephora. However, it is the second most reviewed, number one most reviewed concealer on Sephora's website is the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer, which is currently getting a 4.25 star rating based on 12.2 thousand reviews. And the Makeup Forever Full Cover Concealer currently has four stars based on, four. I mix that up. The NARS is $32 for six mil of product and the Makeup Forever is 42 for 14 mil of product. So this Makeup Forever Concealer is another one where a little bit goes a long way. I'm gonna take a pea size amount, I'm gonna dot it under my eyes, and then I'm gonna use my BK Beauty Times Angie from Hot Flashy A506, and I'm gonna use this to blend out. Make sure everything's really flowing together well and everything's becoming one. I'm gonna use my foundation brush and just pat over my concealer and that will just help the two textures kind of come together. So next I want to go ahead and follow up with setting powder. That way my powder products will apply nice and smoothly over my base. And can you guess what the number one most rated setting powder is? If you're saying the Laura Mercier translucent powder, you are correct. Now, I don't have the full size because this is a product I did declutter a few years ago, but I have this duo, which includes the regular translucent and the glow translucent powder. I got this from Sephora, but let's check out the stats. Laura Mercier translucent loose setting powder currently has four and a half stars based on 9,000 reviews. It retails for $51 and you get 29 grams of product. I use an IT Cosmetics Heavenly Looks Wand Ball Powder Brush. This is the number eight brush, and I'm gonna use this to apply the powder. So with this powder, I like to use a really fluffy brush and apply a very, very small amount. I decluttered the powder because I found it looked a little too heavy on me, but, when I was a freelance artist, especially with a lot of my bridal clients, this is a powder I would use almost every single client because on everyone else, I found it looked really beautiful. I'm intrigued. This combination, even though we've used quite a few matte products, it's still looking really nice and really smooth on the skin. It does have a kind of soft, velvety matte feel to the skin but it, everything feels very lightweight. Now, part of that will have to do with application. If you're heavier handed, you will get a heavy result with products, but you can sheer anything out. So far, I'm really loving this combination. Most reviewed powder highlight at Sephora, the Fenty Beauty Kilowatt Freestyle Highlighter, 4.75 stars out of 3.5 thousand reviews on Sephora's app. And, $48 for seven grams of product. This is another product I had in my collection and I decluttered. I had the shade, I believe was called Lightning Dust and Fire Crystal. So it's more of like a pinky champagne color. For me, the highlight was just a little too intense. I found it emphasized texture, but now I'm really curious to try it out again. So if you've tried it and love it, let me know in the comments down below and maybe I'll pick it up during the Sephora sale. Today, I'm gonna to be using one of my favorite highlights, which to, which happens to be the second most reviewed powder highlight on Sephora's website. And this is my Laura Mercier Matte Radiance Baked Powder. I have the shade Highlight 01. This is a long time favorite for many years. Mine's grubby. It looks like I'm just getting close to the pan, so I will have to get another one of these in the near future. So this highlight, four and a half stars based on 996 reviews. It retails for $55 and you get 7.3 grams of product. K Beauty number 106, this is their rounded foundation brush. I have been loving this brush, even though it's a foundation brush, for really intense highlights because it just really smooths everything to the skin. So even though this Laura Mercier highlight is called Matte Radiance, you can build it up to be a quite intense glow. And so if I want to see if I can take a great highlight and make it even better by using this brush to really melt it into the skin. Okay, so that is the Laura Mercier Matte Radiance Highlight and Highlight 01. I love this. I, I think it should be more reviewed, more loved. <laughs> so the most reviewed bronzer at Sephora is the NARS Bronzer Powder in 
It currently has 4.75 stars based on 3.6 thousand reviews, retails for $50 for eight grams of product. I don't have just their plain bronzing powder. This is a mini sample size of the classic Laguna bronzer that came with the birthday present. I've had Laguna in the past. It wasn't a favorite for me. I found it pulled a little too orangey. So I'm gonna use the Refert number 30 brush and I'm just going to lightly apply this. So that was nice. The Refert number 30 brush does a nice job at shearing out the product. For me, I like this bronzer. I still feel like it pulls a little too warm for me. So I'm gonna use my It Cosmetics brush that I used to apply that Laura Mercier powder. And I'm just going to soften over that just a bit. Up next, we have one of my favorite things in makeup, and that is blush. The most reviewed blush on Sephora's website is the NARS Powder Brush, currently receiving 4.75 stars based on 17.9 thousand reviews. Retails for $39, and you get 4.8 grams of products. Most people know of NARS and their iconic blush orgasm. For me, it's a color I don't love for myself. It is more of a peachy pink. It has a gold reflect to it. And I just, I've never been a huge fan of the color. So I'm gonna be using the shade Behave, which is a nice kind of soft matte, kind of beigey, peachy pink. And I'm gonna use the It Cosmetics French Boutique Blush Brush. So I'm gonna go back to the Urban Decay palette. I'm gonna use the fluffy end of the brush and I'm gonna go back into the first shade we used called Strange. And I'm just going to run this under my lower lash line. Same side of the brush, I'm gonna go into the second shade we use, which is the fourth shade in the Limit. So instead of taking the brush straight in like I did for that first shade, I'm gonna now tilt it up at about a 45 degree angle, run that right under my eye. So thinner end of the Urban Decay brush, and I'm gonna go into the next shade that we used, which is the fifth shade in the palette called Buzz. And I'm gonna take this more so on the tip of the brush. And using the point of this, I'm gonna use this to lightly line the lower center point of my eye. I'm gonna go into the sixth shade in the palette, which is what we used on our inner corner, which is the shade Trick, also on the point of the brush. So we'll take this about a quarter away along our lower lash line. And go into the ninth shade of the palette called Factory, which is that dark shade we use as an upper liner. And I'm gonna use this to just add a little definition to my outer lash line. And that's gonna help connect my lower eye to my upper eye. Run just under the eye, back and forth, get to this outer corner circle. You can connect to the upper lash. The most reviewed brow pencil at Sephora is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Wiz, which is receiving 4.25 stars based on 15.6 thousand reviews. It retails for $28 for 0.85 grams of product. I have a mini size in the shade taupe, so I'm just going to lightly fill in my brows and I'll be right back. The Brow Wiz is a nice pencil. For me, if I was gonna choose an Anastasia Brow Pencil, I prefer the shape of the Brow Definer, which is more that triangular wedge shape, just because I like to make my brows easy because I don't enjoy filling in my brows. I like to follow up with a little bit of a brow gel just to hold everything in place. Currently, the most reviewed brow gel at Sephora is the Benefit Gimme Brow Plus Tinted Volumizing Eyebrow Gel. 4.25 star rating based on 5,000 reviews. Retails for $32 for three grams of product. So I'm gonna use another product that isn't the most reviewed. However, it still has a fair amount of reviews. I featured earlier this year in one of my empties videos and that Benefit 24 Hour Brow Setter Clear Eyebrow Gel, 4.25 stars based on 1.4 thousand reviews, and it retails for $32 for seven mil of product. So very basic brow gel, just wipe it through the brows. And as soon as I run out of this little mini gel, I will be buying the full size because it's one of my favorite brow gels. It's the only one that keeps like those unruly brow hairs in place all day. Let's add something else to the lips. So for lips, we all, I always like to start with the liner, and currently the most reviewed lip pencil 
on Sephora's website is the Makeup Forever Aqua Lip Waterproof Lip Liner Pencil. It's receiving four and a half stars based on 2.1 thousand reviews. Retails for $26.50 for 1.2 grams of product. I am going to be using the Charlotte Tilbury Lip Cheat Lip Liner, which has 4.5 stars based on 262 reviews and it retails for $27 for 1.2 grams of product. And I have the shade Pillow Talk, so I'm just going to line and kind of feather the color into my lip. The number one most reviewed lipstick at Sephora is a liquid lipstick, and it's one I've tried. I'm just not a huge fan. I find it a little too drying, but that is the KVD Beauty Everlasting Longwear Liquid Lipstick. It's currently receiving four stars based on 15 point 3,000 reviews. It retails for $28 for 6.6 .6 mil of product. Most reviewed lip stick, as in just a solid stick, cream lipstick. And this is the YSL Rouge Veloup Shine Lipstick Balm, which is receiving 4.5 stars based on 2.2 thousand reviews. It retails for $50 for 3.2 grams of product. I have shade number 47. It has a very kind of glossy feel to it. So it's the most reviewed gloss on Sephora's website, which is the Fenty Beauty Gloss Bomb Universal Lip Luminizer, which is currently receiving a rating of 4.5 stars based on 11.5 thousand reviews. Retails for $25 for 9 mil of product. If I'm not mistaken, the best selling shade in this range is the shade Fenty Glow. I bought it as soon as it came out. It wasn't one of my favorite shades, so I passed it on to, I think, my mom? Not sure. But the shade I have is called Sweet Mouth, which is kind of like a sheer pinky peachy nude color. Let's pop back over to our Urban Decay eyeshadow palette. I'm gonna use the thinner side of the brush and I'm gonna go into the second shade in the palette called Dust. I'm gonna place this just on the very inner corner of my eye. That's just gonna add a nice kind of pop to the eyes to keep the eyes looking just bright and awake. On Sephora's app, there is not a section for kind of finishing powders or buffing powders. All the powders and setting sprays are just kind of all lumped together in one big category. So I went through, narrowed it down to the all the powders that had more of a radiant satin or luminous finish. And the most reviewed of those products is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder, which is currently receiving 4.25 stars based on 3.1 thousand reviews. It retails for $64 for 10 grams of product. And for this one, I have the shade Ethereal Light, the IT Cosmetics Bye Bye Pores Powder Brush. The most reviewed setting spray at Sephora is the Urban Decay All Nighter Long Lasting Makeup Setting Spray currently with a 4.25 star rating based on 11.2 thousand reviews. It retails for $42 and you get 118 mil of product. Milk Makeup Hydro Grip Setting and Refreshing Spray, which is currently receiving a 4.5 star rating based on 1.1 thousand reviews. Retails for $48 for 100 mil of product. I have like a deluxe sample size of the product. So this is a relatively newer setting spray to me, but I really, really enjoy it. The mist is really, really nice. It never kind of spits at the skin. It doesn't feel drying. It doesn't make the skin feel tight or uncomfortable. It just kind of sets everything in place, smooths everything out, takes on any powderiness on the skin. The most reviewed mascara at Sephora is none other than the Too Faced Better Than Sex Volumizing Mascara, which is currently receiving Four stars based on 17.5 thousand reviews. It retails for $36 and you get eight mil of product. So I'm gonna apply this to my lashes and I'll be right back. There is mascara on. Let's give the hair a little zhuzh. So this is gonna be our final look using some of the most reviewed products at Sephora that you can pick up getting a discount starting on Friday, November 5th. There are a few different categories. I'll have all the details about the different tiers when people can shop at Sephora and get that discount. Let me know what you think of this look down below. 
I really, really enjoy it. Everything just kind of came together. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye, y'all.